Hello, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. So, today is going to be my last late night ice cream or any sort of junk food. Tomorrow, somehow, I'm going to wake up as early as 5 a.m. and get started in the early day. I want to go to the gym, but the calendar says the new month starts next week. And there's no better time to start going to the gym than the beginning of the new month. Perhaps a few weeks or so, I'm going to have a startup as successful as Tesla. I'm going to be rich as Elon Musk is. Maybe not the Tesla part, but how common are these phrases with you? But to make it simpler, how many of you have been put in a situation where you've had something that you needed to do today, but you just kept on delaying it for the next day? Could you raise a hand? That's great. And then when the next day came, how many of you felt guilty? Could you raise a hand? And then the cycle keeps going on and on and on. And it keeps going on and on and on. Now, a few weeks later, this last late night ice cream you promised yourself was only the first out of 10 you ate that night. You're waking up at 5 a.m. goal, only turned to sleeping at 5 a.m. because you've been procrastinating all day. And now, it's day one on the calendar. It's the beginning of the new week where we're supposed to be hitting the gym. But we realized that we've already added on an extra 10 pounds. And we needed to lose 10 kgs, now we need to lose 20. And it's hard. So why bother go to the gym? Let's go to the nearest burger place instead. And then the days keep going on and on and on again. And we come to a realization that things became two times worse. Things became two times harder. Things became two times challenging. We decide that we need to make a change. But then magic comes in. And our mind tells us to calm down. There's no need to worry. And what's the solution? Nothing. We're just going to delay to tomorrow again. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the ideal self within each of us. It's a self which keeps convincing our subconscious mind that there's no harm to take, taking today as a break, and that tomorrow is somewhat going to be magical. It keeps on telling us that there is no need to be accountable for anything today. It keeps on convincing us that tomorrow we're going to wake up as early as Elon Musk. We're going to dress as fast as Mark Zuckerberg does. We're going to run to our jobs as quick as Usain Bolt does. This ideal self keeps on making us hold zero sense of accountability for the moment and always live in the dream that somehow tomorrow is going to be magical without us doing any sort of effort. This ideal self is the leading cause of the ultimate behavioral disposition of our modern era. And this is perfectionism. Now, perfectionism is a very serious issue. So let's get real for a bit. According to the literature, perfectionism is defined as a state of mind in which one sets excessive high standards and goals, and develops a flawless vision to their own self. And one of the many adverse events of perfectionism is that has been found in many studies to be the stemming cause for mental health disorders. According to the World Health Organization, for short the WHO, a record number of young people worldwide are suffering from threatening and very high levels of depression and anxiety disorders. And what is more dangerous, is that the diagnosis is being at ages younger than ever before. In this recent report published in the previous November of last year about adolescent mental health, two very alarming statistics were mentioned. First, globally, one in every seven 10 to 19, 10 to 19 years old experience some sort of mental health disorder. And second, suicide has become the fourth leading cause of death among 15 to 19 years old. These numbers are very alarming. But how does society respond? Unfortunately, in many sections of society, older generations tend to overlook such alarming numbers due to the pre preset stereotypical image to our younger generations being one which is less resilient, one which can't handle enough pressure, and one which is a snowflake generation. On the contrary, however, there continues to be increasingly available evidence from the literature on how these increased rates of depression and anxiety and suicidal intentions among the young individuals are likely to have stemmed from many causes, but the number one cause that has been constantly ranked in the literature is, unrealistically, high expectations set by the elder generations. 
Now, I do want to share a very interesting study conducted by Thomas Curran and Andrew Hill from the University of Bath and York St. John University, respectively. Now, this study tested for generational changes in college students' responses to a multi-dimensional perfectionism scale over the course of 27 years, from 1989 to 2016. What's unique about this study is that it was the first ever in the literature to examine perfectionism at a deep cohort level. Now, this study has stated very interesting findings and very key significant findings. However, what I do want to share today is the conclusion that they found. They found that perfectionism in all its forms studied have increased over the 27 years, and they've attributed this to three main causes. One, younger generations currently are being challenged by very high goals that were never demanded before. Number two, younger generations are currently being supervised by high demanding leaders and highly demanding superiors, which demand more than ever before. And three, younger generations are currently in competition with very toxic environments, more toxic than ever before. So the question is, whom is it do we want to blame? Is it the older generations which set the bar so high to a point which we can't cope with? Or is it social media, which is our new pandemic, only exclusive to our snowflake generation, this pandemic of social media, which unfortunately leads to a vicious cycle of unrealistic snippets from people's daily life, it only allows people to post their successes, but never post their struggles. And the consumers of social media are the young generations, people which don't have much life experience, people which only see the success, only see the wins, but they don't see the failure behind it. And thus, when they're faced in real life by certain issues, which are from the day-to-day -day life, they only fail to react to it properly. Now, I personally couldn't find an answer to the question of whom is it do we blame, but I realized there is a much more dangerous question that we need to ask. Why is this the case even in the first place? Why are we competing with one another? Why are we focusing on being the first on the expense of others? Now, I personally would highly attribute this to many reasons, and so does the literature. However, one reason which cannot be overlooked is the fact that we're currently in an era which is quantitatively biased. What does that mean? Now, focus is being made on numbers. Focus is being made on how much do you have of a certain thing, not how good do you have from a certain thing. Now, I would like to give a very short example from medical school, which I proudly belong to. And a uh, side note, actually, I'm a student at BMC, and I'll be graduating only in two weeks from now. So, just to... Thank you. Now, I'll take you through a typical cycle of a medical student. Now, once you're a high school kid and you make that decision that you want to join medical school, the number one thing you need to ensure is a minimum GPA on that report card. And once you're in medical school, your ultimate goal is going to specialty training. And for specialty training, you need to have a minimum GPA, minimum scores, minimum number of publications, minimum of this and minimum of that. And now you've made it to specialty training. You need to have a minimum number of audits, minimum number of cases, minimum number of this, minimum number of that. These are all quantities and numbers. Other things which truly matter in the field of medicine as how well your research was, not how much it was, get overlooked. How well your bedside manner was with patients, not how well you performed in that OSCE, get overlooked. How supportive you were to your colleagues, not how much you had of them, get overlooked. How much you've actually helped the people around you grow, get overlooked. No one is gonna grade you for how well you treated a patient, but they're only going to grade you for the correct diagnosis. And is this how medicine is supposed to be? I really don't think that's the case. So, what's the consequence of this? Now, in short, the consequences are so much, but one of which medical students across the world suffer from in one way or another is toxicity. Unfortunately, this competitiveness of who ranks first and who does this and who does that, who has more and not who has better, leads to that everyone is competing with everyone. And unfortunately, in the race to gain numbers and number of publications and number of scores, we tend to overlook the qualities which truly matter as how well we treat others and how to be humans along the way. So what is the solution? Well, the solution is quite simple. We need to teach the younger generations in all fields that good is better than more, that how impactful your work is is better than how much more you perform it that having something which truly matters is better than having something which is only in a, in a big quantity. 
Failure is not weakness. Failure is just part of the journey. And perfectionism is never a priority and should never be one. There are much more happier, healthier, and more productive goals in life than being perfect. And we need to teach the younger generations that regardless of how small their efforts were, yet consistent, they'll eventually multiply over time. And speaking of multiplication, I'd like to end my talk with a quote from one of my favorite books of all time, which is Atomic Habits by the author James Clear. Now in the book, James mentions that time magnifies the margin between success and failure. It's gonna only multiply what you feed it. And I'd like to add on that, that you need to prioritize feeding your day consistently over feeding it perfectly. Thank you for listening to my not-so-perfect TED Talk. However, I hope it was an ideal experiment. Thank you.